the coronavirus declared a public health emergency in the U.S. Three out of four of us Americans are now under stay-at-home orders. In addition to our health care workers and first responders, there are estimated three million grocery store workers in this country. They go out every day while most of us are at home, and they're trying their best to keep our shelves stocked. You got to go in with a positive mind and not go in negative because you don't want anything to happen. My mother always told me, you can't let bad affect bad. You got to let good affect good. My name is Justina Celestin. I work at PSK Food Town, and I've been working there for almost three years. I usually work 30 hours a week. I feel proud that I'm actually the front line and helping people. I wouldn't call myself a hero, I'm just helping. I wouldn't say I was calling myself a hero. Good morning, Josina. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, here. Good. My name is Noah Katz. I'm the co-president and chief operating officer of PSK Supermarkets, Food Town. My family's been in the business since 1956 when my grandfather started the company. My dad joined him back in the 60s and today it's operated by myself, my brother Danny, and about 1,200 amazing associates. This particular store is the super food town of Bedford-Stuyvesant in central Brooklyn in a place called Restoration Plaza. Grocery stores are working to juggle unprecedented demand. As the coronavirus spread, shoppers across the country are, I hate to say it, panic buying and stocking up. Today, right now, those shelves are completely empty. There was some panic. People didn't know. There was uncertainty. I was uncertain. There were some gaps where we were fighting for rice, fighting for beans, fighting for oil, doing whatever we had to do to get the supply into the stores. And our team did a great job. They filled in the gaps. In the very beginning, you had all these products were just really blowing off the shelves. Here's an example where Ronzoni, Barilla went to a limited assortment. That's all they were producing. That's all they were putting through the supply chain. So we went to a restaurant supplier. Here's 10 pounds of pasta for $12.99. It's actually a good buy. So we made decisions like that every day, every week through this entire process. So this side of the aisle would have been full with all kinds of variety. And now we probably have less than half of the different variety that you'd normally see, but at least we would have something to offer our customers. We were lucky enough to be on a conference call where the supermarket operators in China, particularly IGA, they were sharing with us everything that was happening. And so we were taking notes, you know, with everything that was going on, what buying masks, plexiglass around the cashiers, what do you have to do to keep your workers as safe as possible? is a medical assistant so she's also a frontline worker so it's like both of us but it's like they know that we're safe they know that we got the safety and sanitation accessories that we need at work here you go thank Thanks. you and You're have up. a wonderful day we added shifts extra cleaning by our own staff plus deep cleaning by outside third-party companies there's no question there's a huge cost in the new COVID environment to operating a supermarket. We've already spent $130,000 on masks in our 13 store chain. We've bought safety glasses. We have extra cleaners, extra sanitizers, safety protocols. Most supermarkets are doing this. The entire industry came together. I have to add that. It's not just us, it's everybody. We're collaborating with our customers every day just to help them stay in stock. I'm Mike Duffy, Chief Executive Officer of CNS Wholesale Grocers. I like to describe CNS as kind of the business behind grocery. So products like Procter & Gamble, Colgate, in addition to the food you would know from Kraft or General Mills. So we'll buy in truckload quantities, combined items from multiple manufacturers, then onto a new truck and deliver that to a grocery store. So that allows the supply chain to be as efficient as possible in moving products from manufacturer to the shelf. You go to a grocery store, pick an aisle, and the shelves are always full, and we as U.S. consumers, kind of, we got kind of spoiled of that. My name is Pedro Reyes. I'm an associate professor of operations and supply chain management 
at Baylor University. What is unique about the grocery supply chain is that 90% or better of the products on the shelf are staple products. The best part about the characteristics of those products is simple. The demand is simple to predict. The difference with this is that this was not predictable. And even if it was, we couldn't predict as much of the panic buying that, that occurred. With the coronavirus detected across the country, shoppers now panic purchasing. The grocery supply chain, if you look from manufacturing to the shelf, there's on average 100 days worth of food. So at the grocery store, on average, there's 20 to 25 days. So when people go in and buy 25 days worth of product in four hours, it takes a while for the product to then move down the supply chain to replenish the store. But it kept happening day after day, week after week. We'll get an out-of-stock sheet, it's called, and it'll say long-term manufacturer outage, meaning that it's going to be a long time before they get this product in, whether it's rice, flour, paper goods. My name is Jose Philippe. I'm the co-owner of Nourishell Farms, along with my partner, Jesus Diaz. Our first opening day was January 17th of this year. Opening a new business is very, very challenging as it is. Most new businesses fail. I was going to work my best and hardest to keep it going, working 15, 16, 17 hours a day, opening and closing, turning around the next morning, getting here at 6 in the morning to receive a delivery. There was a lull after grand opening for a couple of weeks. And then the rumors and the chatter about this virus being spread overseas. This morning, the Chinese city at the center of this epidemic is on lockdown. Virtually nobody allowed to leave. There was a day where I got a shipment of sanitizer and a local newspaper reporter put it online that we had and we had a rush and it sold out in about two hours. Designation of America's first containment zone now in a Westchester County community. We were just outside the quarantine zone. It was definitely a game changer for us. And people started to come in and just buy loads of, of product, of anything they could store. Let's, let's knock these orders out today. Let's get them all done. I've been blessed with my family, my children that have come and helped me in this situation. Grocery stores are doing a booming business. We've seen the sales explode for shelf-stable items. We've seen about a 50% increase. Our average sale was in the low $30 range per transaction, and now it's in the $50 range. We did the best we could to hold the line on all of our pricing. I mean, that was definitely one of the priorities. But there are some, you know, intermediate and short-term fluctuations. You know, that, that goes without saying. But generally speaking, you know, they're, they're blips. We've definitely seen increases. We try uh, our best not to pass them along. Sometimes it's, it's a necessary part of business. Supermarkets across the country reporting panic buying with people showing up and cleaning them out of toilet paper. I still can't get toilet paper. I hear my neighbors calling out to me, where's the Charmin? And my response is, it's on its way.